welcome to the Great British Quilter podcast. I'm Sarah Ashford, and as a modern quilter and founder of the Great British Quilter Instagram Challenge, I've spent the last three years galvanising and championing British quilters and the quilting industry. In this series, I speak to British quilt designers, fabric companies, publishers and shop owners to discover their behind-the-scenes stories and to discuss what it means to be a part of the British quilting community today. My sponsors for this episode are Today's Quilter and Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine, two delightful magazines that cover all you need to know about quilting. Today's Quilter provides a fresh take on traditional quilting with 100 glorious pages of projects, features and news for the intermediate to experienced quilter. Love Patchwork and Quilting brings you the best of modern quilting featuring clear step-by-step projects for quilts, cushions, home style and gifts with something for every skill level. Both magazines come with a handy quilting supplement in every issue. You can try these magazines out for yourself with this exclusive three issues for £5 offer. Visit www.buysubscriptions.com forward slash the GBQ podcast. My guest today is Alice Hadley. Alice is the editor of Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine and has worked on the title since it launched in 2014. She is the creative force behind the mag, working with amazing contributors all over the world to come up with the fun, fresh projects that feature in every issue. Outside of work, Alice is a member of the Southwest Modern Quilt Guild, an avid collector of fabric, and sometimes EPPer. She had her first child in 2018, and she's still trying to figure out how to make time to sew. I travelled up to Bristol where I met Alice at the immediate media offices and we were lucky enough to get a slot in their recording studio where we recorded this podcast. I hope you enjoy listening to Alice's journey into publishing and into quilting. Oh, hi, Alice. Thank you so much for coming on to the show. It's great to have you here. Here we are at uh, the Immediate Media um, offices in Bristol, and uh, we're very lucky to be in the recording studio, which is fantastic. Uh, And it's lovely to see you. So thank you for coming on. Oh, thanks. It's my pleasure. So can you tell us, how did you first get into publishing? Um, well, it's, it's not a hugely exciting story, if I'm totally honest. Um, I did my degree in English and happened to do an elective in publishing, which was sort of more by chance than, than planning, really. Um, and I found that I really loved the structure of the sort of publishing module and writing copy to fit in spaces and um, the discipline of subbing text. I'm a very organized person and I really enjoy that kind of quite structured working working life so that quite appealed um and then I sort of graduated and was looking for jobs and I happened to see a job as an editorial assistant working on um craft titles for now defunct publishers um but it was an independent publisher so I got a chance to do a bit of everything I was um helping sub sample text and um, helping with a bit of commissioning. And I kind of got a taste of everything. Uh, So that was my in, so to speak. And then I kind of worked my way around. The Southwest is quite a small um, network of publishing. So Mm -hmm. we're really lucky that we've got a hub of creative publishers in Bath and Bristol. um, And everybody sort of knows each other. So we're quite a close-knit community. Everybody's sort of... uh, you know, got a few degrees of separation between us. So I worked my way around. Um, I did some more craft titles for a little while. I did book publishing um, with some cookery books and craft titles again. And as part of that, I happened to work with an editor called Jenny Fox Proverbs. Yes. Who um, is quite well known in the industry. And when she was launching Love Patchwork and Quilting, she approached me sort of out of the blue and asked Um, whether I wanted to come and work on the launch with her, um, which meant going freelance, which was quite terrifying. (laughs) Um, But once I, I, and I didn't have any, any understanding of kind of the modern quilting community before that, to be totally honest. Um, And so I did a bit of research and, and realized that it was, you know, really sort of buzzing community and there was lots happening and um, it was a really supportive community and people were really excited about, um, kind of new launches and 
So it seemed like a no-brainer to join, really. And that was, I think, six years ago. I think that was 2014. And I've just sort of stuck around. <laughs> I've just stuck it out and now I'm the editor. And now you're editor. Yeah. <laughs> and it's such a fantastic publication. It's one I've been really proud to be a part of over the years. Oh, thank you. Um, can you tell our listeners um, a little bit more about it, Love Patchwork and Quilting Magazine? Mm-hmm. So we're a modern quilting magazine. Um, we publish 13 times a year and uh, Love Patchwork and Quilting is sold on UK newsstand. We also sell internationally. And we've got a digital edition as well. Um, Really, the magazine focuses on showcasing the best quilting designers from around the world. So we're we're not UK focused. We try and have a a sort of variety of international contributors, which is really important. Um, And we pride ourselves on presenting really easy to follow, clear instructions. That's a big part of the magazine, accompanied by beautiful photography and styling. And it really is. The photography, I think, is what sells the magazine, isn't it, to so many people because the quilts just are so beautifully styled. It makes you think, yeah, I want to make that quilt. Oh, that's that's really nice to hear. That's what we aim for. And I think the quilts are really beautiful projects and so... In some ways, the styling is easy. You know, they they often style themselves and it's a really good part of the job is getting projects in and sitting down as a team and we'll look at them and sort of see where our imagination takes us and that's kind of the starting point for styling. Um, And then the other thing about Love Patchwork and Quilting is that every issue comes with a quilting tool or a supplement. So those are things that we produce in-house and that's just a little little extra that we do and they're always very useful aren't they i always find that your um supplements uh, you know the booklets that you produce or the tools that you have they're always really useful for the modern quilter which is which is great good uh, yeah again really nice to hear that's what we're aiming for we don't want the cover gifts to be sort of short-term throwaway disposable items we're aiming for them to be something that becomes a part of your quilting toolkit yeah brilliant um, um so who would you say is your target audience then um well it, it's difficult to narrow narrow down really um the projects every issue are a sort of starting point for beginners so everything in the magazine we think you should be able to tackle if you've got you know you can use your sewing machine you should be able to sit down with the magazine and get to the end of a project um the flip side of that is that for more experienced quilters they're are a mix of sort of quicker finishes and things with new techniques to sort of test them um so we do try and introduce those new techniques for the more advanced quilters um and really i mean it just comes down to sort of your personal taste level i think love patchwork and quilting is for anybody that loves color and has a sort of passion for for modern fabrics i think that's what sets us apart and that's what sets our readers apart as well And so can you tell us about um, a typical day as editor of Love Patchwork and Quilting? I mean, you must be so busy um, and it's such a beautifully um, produced publication. um, And there's obviously so much work going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So what does what does the average day look like to you or is there no such thing as an average day? (laughs) Um, Well, I suppose the pattern of our days, I should introduce the team because they're really important. So there's me, I'm the editor. And then we have Lorna, who's our production editor. So Lorna does, um, she commissions the features. She subs everything on page. She's a a little proofreading whirlwind. Um, And she does all the sort of day-to-day stuff with contributors. And she also mans our Instagram page, which is very important. And then we've got Kit, who's our art editor. And she does all the page layouts. She does all the photography styling. Um, Kit's the one that goes on photo shoots and, and is actually you know, doing the physical photography styling and she sources all the props. Um, And then we've also got Sarah, who's our technical editor, and she does all of the tech checking on the projects. Um, And she occasionally writes tutorials and sews up samples. So it's not just me in isolation. And um, the pattern of our days really depends where we are in the print schedule. Mm -hmm. So we're sending one issue about every three and a half weeks. Yeah. Um, So generally... I start very early. I'm in the office for half seven. That's early. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But it's nice. I get a couple of hours of real quiet time before anybody else is in. Uh, And then it's a couple of hours of working through emails. Um, Mm -hmm. Because we work with international contributors, we're all a little bit out of sync with our time zones. Yes. So morning is the time to review what's coming from from people over 
over the evening or over the weekend. Um, and that can be responding to design submissions. Sometimes it's really dry things like dealing with accounts and payment queries. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not all glamour. <laughs> <laughs> and it's organising briefs for the team. Um, and do, there's things like marketing and subscriptions and, again, quite quite dry stuff, but solid couple of hours just to get through that sort of admin. Um, I think admin is quite a big part of being an editor. It's, it's not very interesting, but um, I think there's kind of a common misconception that I spend my day just looking at lovely fabrics and quilts. Yes. And that is, I mean, admittedly, quite a big part of my day and I'm very lucky, but... Um, to be an editor, I think your first passion has to be publishing. Yes. So for me, my first love is publishing. My second love is quilting. Right. And it's a, a happy coincidence that they, they Come merge. Come together. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm trying to think what else I would do in a day. So if we're on deadline, then I've, of course, got a big stack of pages to check. Yes. So everything in the mag I read, mm-hmm. Lorna reads, Sarah reads. Yes. So <laughs> as many eyes as possible on page is a good thing. Um but, you know, it's 100 pages, so it's quite a lot of checking to That's do. That's a lot of checking. Um, and quite regularly because you're putting out the magazine 13 times a year. So you've just finished one and then you're on to the next, the next one. Yeah, we're on a rolling, rolling cycle of deadlines. But um, we're lucky. We work very far in advance. We're a really organised team. So we, we aren't under a huge amount of pressure for deadlines. We, we know where we are with it. Um, so, yes, if we're on deadline, I will spend probably most of my day then checking pages and just following up queries um and essentially I'm the final sort of line of checks on pages so I'm looking at as if I'm a reader and thinking is there all the information that I need here to buy exactly the fabrics that we're showing and do you know are the instructions as clear as they could be is there anything here that when I read first pass I think I don't not sure about that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is there all the information about the designers if we want to follow up and find out more information? Um, so, yeah, lots of lots of page checking. And if we're not on deadline, um, then I'm looking ahead probably six months to a year in advance oh, of where really? we are. really? That is mm-hmm. far in advance, Sarah, isn't you know, it? You know the week. We're so far <laughs> You ahead. are very far in advance. <laughs> um, so the, the sort of the main team is usually working on the issue that's out the next month, whereas my focus is six months to a year in a, ahead. So at the moment, I'm looking at Christmas 2020. Wow. <laughs> um, which is just a necessary part of... Um, you know, planning the magazine and making sure that the fabric that we feature is timely. Um, So I'll also be working with designers and planning in quilts and kind of liaising to make sure that we get the best quality projects in. Um, And that leads me on to my next question quite nicely, actually. mm -hmm. Um, So when quilters submit quilt designs to you, what is it that you're looking for? Um, So I've sort of thought about this quite a lot and I think... um, one of the really important things is to show that you know the magazine. So we've got quite a distinctive style in Love Patchwork and Quilting. And I think just looking through an issue, you can see the sorts of patterns that we tend to feature and the techniques and the skill level. I think it's really important before you submit to to us or to any other magazine to really check that the work is a good fit for you and for your brand. I think most quilters have got quite a distinctive style. And so I think... Before you reach out to anyone, just make sure that you're happy that your style aligns with the magazine that you're submitting to. And that's kind of the first the first big hurdle, really. Um, and then the second thing is, as I said, we're working really far in advance. So you probably want to be looking at six months down the line for publication date. So bear that in mind if you're submitting something that's very seasonal or that ties in with a particular release date for fabric um so yes I would say if you're submitting for a January on sale issue you probably want to have ideas with an editor by June which um you almost have to reverse your seasons to make sure you're in in time with publication dates which is a bit confusing I do do appreciate that um and then I think uh just write a really simple introduction tell people tell your editor the person you're getting in touch with tell them who you are and you know what what um you've done in the past and explain your ideas and kind of tell them a bit about what you're submitting I think the more kind of personality you can put into your submission the better really um 
because I, when I'm commissioning, I'm looking at what about this quilt makes it stand out? You know, what is there that we're offering the reader here that they couldn't find on the internet or that they couldn't sort of work out from the, for themselves using, you know, basic quilt maths? It's got to have a bit of something extra. Yeah. And I can't say what that quantifiable thing is. I just know it when, when I see it. When you see it, it yes. Mm -hmm. um, and if you've got images, so helpful to share because even when I'm commissioning, I'll have issue themes that I'm plugging the quilts into and we'll also be already at that early stage planning photography. Do you have mood boards? Do you use mood we boards? We have issue mood boards and um, we have lots of shared Pinterest boards within the team that um, are built around each issue um, and that share, that's where we share the photography. Um, so, yeah, we're already thinking about, you know, the styling, how it's going to look on page at that really early stage. So, so the more you can visualise exactly. somebody's submission, the yeah. better, really, isn't yeah. it? I mean, even a sort of a hand-drawn quilt sketch and a uh, digital fabric pole is really useful. Yes. That's, that's a really good starting point. Um, and then I guess the last thing is... Uh, just don't be disheartened if your first idea isn't accepted it's not it's nothing personal um sometimes i've already got something similar already commissioned or something similar has been in a rival title um or it might just not be the right fit for the issues that i'm commissioning at that time um so i think it's really important to just get in touch and submit again and um you know it's not as you you know you've worked with me sarah that it's not just a case of submitting a design and that's it tick in the box we'll have a bit of back and forth yeah absolutely and, um work out what's best for the magazine and for you as a designer so it's a it's a collaborative approach so just because it's a no to the first time doesn't mean that it will be the next time next and i time. hope that people aren't put off if they don't get in first time round yes and uh, you've recently got back from uh, Quilt Market in Houston. Uh, I saw lots of fantastic photographs and things on Instagram. It looked like a, a really exciting event. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us a little bit about your trip? I can. I totally dropped the ball on <laughs> taking any pictures when I was there. It was so bad. It's like a combination of being... Uh, sort of jet lagged and exhausted there. it's so hard isn't it because you want to have the experience of being there but mm -hmm. at the same time record that experience but sometimes you're just so immersed that you forget to take the pictures or taking the pictures can take you away from mm -hmm. from the you know the experience of being there a little bit yeah and I think because because I'm a quilter as well as an editor I do get a bit starstruck sometimes uh -huh. so I feel a bit I don't want to be the person that's sort of I'm gonna take a picture please um <laughs> And also it's it's a totally whirlwind trip for us. So we land on Thursday. On Friday, we do the schoolhouse sessions and yes. see all the new collections. And then we have Saturday, a full day at the show, and Sunday morning, and we fly back Sunday lunchtime. Goodness. So it's, um, it's intense. Um, so it's all a bit of a blur, and it usually takes me sort of a week to decompress it and think about, you know, what we've seen. Um, I don't know whether other people will agree, but I think that the show was probably smaller this year, but I don't think that was to the detriment of what was on show. Mm -hmm. um, it feels like there's been quite a sort of filtering of new fabric and there's a bit, I would say there's a bit less coming out now. Right. Which I actually think is a really good thing. I think there was a certain point, maybe a couple of years ago, where there was just so, so much, much new fabric. It was just... Uh, you know, n non-stop adding to people's wish lists. And um, I think... Sometimes less is more, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. I think uh, pairing it back a little bit just gives everybody a bit of a chance to breathe. And I, I mean, we're, I'm bombarded by fabric every day at work. So, you know, maybe I'm more exposed to it than most, but I certainly felt a, a little bit of sort of overwhelm. There was just so much modern fabric, um, which is great. It's a really good sign for the market. But as a consumer was getting a little bit much. Um, so it was definitely a bit more of a paired back show. Um, and really we were, the main thing that we go for is to meet our international contributors and the brands that um, advertise and work with the magazine. So it was um, mostly sort of business meetings. And, right. <laughs> um, I didn't get much of a chance to see designers and quilt cons a better place for that really. Quilt market tends to be much more about manufacturers. Yes. Um, so, well, it's an industry show, isn't it? Yeah, it's a real key industry touchstone for us. So it's really important that we're there. And it's great to meet um, people like uh, we met with Figo Fabrics, who yes. launched while I was on maternity leave. So 
I'd not heard of them until I came back. I didn't read the magazine while I was on maternity leave. I was going leave, to say, I just, just read an interview with them in your magazine. <laughs> no, I completely checked out when I was on maternity leave. So they were totally new to me when I came back. Um, and they're a really key partner of the magazine. And they've done an amazing job of their marketing. And so to be able to meet the team and say hi and... That's really important, isn't it? Building those relationships on a, on a personal level. You can't beat standing next to someone mm -hmm. compared to an email or a phone call or a video call. Yeah, definitely. And, and a big part of Quilt Market is saying thank you to the fabric manufacturers who support the magazine and they supply fabric for projects yeah. and, you know, they advertise and... Um, that's such a big thing for us. That's what keeps one of the things that keeps the magazine going. So to some of our meetings are just to say, thank you. You're great. We really appreciate it, which is a, a nice thing to do in person. Um, and did you notice any particular quilting trends that are coming up for 2020? Yeah, definitely. I mean, one of the things was, as I said, less um, SKUs in a collection. So less prints in collections. Um why do you think that is so that it's more affordable for the retailers to buy a whole collection or? Well, there was a big focus this year at Quilt Market about how to help quilt, quilt shops sort of prosper. Mm -hmm. And I do think that part of that is that uh, reaction to there being this huge oversaturation of new fabrics that, you know, no quilter could with the best will in the world possibly buy everything that was yeah. being put out. And I think that had quite a detrimental effect on quilt shops. Yes. Um, because they just can't turn the stock fast enough, I suppose. Um, so I think it's a reaction to that. And I think that's a, a really good part of the quilting industry is that the manufacturers do respond to the demands of the retailers and the consumer. Yes. So that's quite a, quite a quick turnaround, really, for you know people to have been expressing their concerns maybe two years ago at Quilt Market and to actually have something in place two years down two the years line later. is quite a good really for a big industry is a, is a good reaction time, I think. Um, I also saw lots of panels. Lots of the manufacturers are producing panels with yes. their lines, which is interesting. Um, it's not something that we feature in the magazine because obviously it's sort of counterintuitive to supplying pattern instructions. Um, but it's quite an interesting indication that people who are time poor are interest, increasingly interested in sewing something. So again... I think that's a really positive, positive thing. And I saw some beautiful panels, actually. The Ruby Star one. Yes, and, Ruby Star. Yes. Always knock it out of the park. So always, don't they? Theirs are lovely. Um, lots of purple. Purple's making a comeback. Oh, is it? Yep. Oh, interesting. You heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Figo, uh, the, the new brand that I was talking about, um, they just seem to have a particular eye for lovely purples i've never been a massive fan of purple before but they've won me over oh they've convinced um, you mm -hmm. ah so lots interesting. of that um lots of sewing notions in fabric yes print. so tula's new launch was all sort of sewing, sewing notions, notions wasn't it with the yeah. sewing machine and the scissors and things yes and everything that was pictured on the fabric you can buy it's very notion. clever, isn't She's it? She's a genius. She is a genius. Um, and the last thing that I thought about was the, there's a lot more substrates out there for quilting with. So um, Violet Craft had a booth with Robert Kaufman to introduce yes. her new fabric line. Uh -huh. And she had amazing velveteen, 100% cotton velveteen. Oh, yes, because she made just, some lovely cushions, didn't she, in the yeah, velvet? Yeah, she'd covered a chair and it was it's really dreamy stuff. And she'd sewn it into quilts with quilting cotton. To show um, that it is versatile and can yeah, be used in yeah, quilting as well. Yeah, she said that well. she washed it and put it through the dryer and it was all fine. Which wow, I'd be key. really interested to give that a try, actually. <laughs> it's really gorgeous. It's got a lovely texture. So, ah. yeah, that's quite. I was quite excited about that. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Absolutely. So did you have a favourite booth? The Violet Craft booth looked incredible. It was. It looked really um, cosy. I just wanted to... Just touch get, everything. Get on in there, get under the quilts. Yeah. Um, actually, my favourite was uh, a brand called So Quirky, which is uh, run by a lovely lady called Mandy Murray, and they're Australian. And um, they had a sort of... So you, the convention centre is quite a dour place. It's all white walls and awful red carpets, and it's um, it's not the best kind of backdrop for trying to build <laughs> a beautiful crafty booth. <laughs> and Mandy had set up this sort of pink, crazy pink gazebo wow. in sort of the back corner so you'd sort of round the corner on these awful red carpets and there was this little haven of 
pink, bright, colourful. She does um, sort of applique patterns of animals and her little booth was just a ray of sunshine. Little san- sanctuary. It was. It was. <laughs> yeah, so that was probably my favourite because it was quite unexpected. I don't remember seeing that. I'm going to have to look that have up. To look and up. I love pink, as you know. So And uh, everything she makes is adorable as well. So oh, I think you'd fantastic. Like her stuff. <laughs> oh, we'll have to check her out then. Um, so can you hint at any exciting things coming up in the magazine for 2020? Ooh. Well, I probably can't give any specifics away. Um but one of the things that we're working really hard on is the quilting tools that come with the magazine. Yes. Um, as I was saying when we started, it's really important to us that they're not just disposable bits of plastic. Mm-hmm. You know that that is a pet peeve for some people, is the sort of bits that you get with magazines. We are genuinely trying to create products that people want to keep in their sewing box and will come back to time and time again. And part of that is creating exclusive designs in-house so our technical editor, Sarah, designs um, all of the tools. Right. And, oh, I didn't realise yep, that. She's got a product design and engineering background. So right. Oh, I see. I did not know kind. that. Um, and we've got a factory in the Far East that produce everything. Uh-huh. Um, everything goes through various sort of layers of quality checking. So um, it's something that we're working on to make even better next year. And we've oh, got fantastic. some really exciting things in the pipeline. Um We've got some really exciting new to the magazine designers. Um, I'm not going to drop any names. Sorry, <laughs> I'm gonna keep you hanging. Um, and we're also going to be overhauling all of our features next year, which will be quite exciting. Um, and we're, I suppose, we're always working to keep updating the magazine. So, as a team, we review every issue together and we look at what works and what didn't, and um, looking at design and you know, should we be should we be changing this? You know what. What can we do to make it better? So we're just going to carry on with that into 2020 and keep making LPQ better and better. Brilliant, brilliant. (laughs) And you're a quilter yourself, aren't you, Alice? Mm -hmm. And uh, what are you working on right now? Have you got time (laughs) for any quilting? (laughs) No, well, since having a baby, free time is sort of a thing of the past. (laughs) Um, I have got three projects technically on the go, although they're sort of parked at the moment. Mm. Two of them, you know, I've been bringing to Guild for almost three years and they're still not (laughs) finished. So my ice cream soda blocks, which I think might be three years in the works. Right. Um... What, how, where would you say you're at? 50%? I think I counted up and I'm about halfway. Halfway. And I don't know whether that's motivating me or actually quite a depressing (laughs) prospect. (laughs) But I love them and when they have time, I do do get my little EPP box out. And I think that's the Um, key, isn't it? Just just keep going. It might be slowly, but just keep plugging away and, you know, you will get there. If you you stop completely, it won't happen, but just just, slowly. I feel so bad because I signed a load of people at our Southwest Quilt Guild up to the Sew Along (laughs) and said, I'm joining the Sew Along. (laughs) Everybody else has finished finished. (laughs) and mine's still, still in the envelopes in some cases. Um, And then I've also got a long-term project, which is my uh, Tula Pink City sampler quilt. Yes. So that's more or less finished. I'm in the middle of hand quilting it. So, again... That's going to take a while as well, Alice. You've committed yourself to these uh, slow and steady projects, haven't you? Yeah, so I think that one's also three, maybe four years in the works, which is quite embarrassing to admit. Um, And then I've got something smaller on the go, which is quite close to my heart. Um, So I had a baby 18 months ago. Mm -hmm. Being a mum is hard work. It is. (laughs) It's been a bit of a shock to the system. I'm sure lots of people will be agreeing. Um, And while I was off, I met two women who have become really good friends. And so I decided when their babies turned one, I would make each of them a quilt. Um, One of them I finished when uh, her baby Alfie was... Uh, 16 months so not too far off deadline the The other one's not finished (laughs) (laughs) so it's still in progress and I'm trying to do a little bit every so often it's not getting there very quickly is that are you uh, machine piecing that one yes the quilt top's pieced it's just it needs to be quilted quilted. which is not a bit that I enjoy really so I'm putting it off um but it's also I'm quite enjoying it's quite a labor of love because every time I sit down I think about so I feel quite emotional about how lucky I am to have met these women. Oh, and, that's lovely. You know, how much how much of a kind of transformative effect they've had on 
on that quite difficult time of being on maternity leave. So um, I'll be a bit sad when I finish when it. When you finish so it. I don't think that's helping me. And quilts are so personal, aren't they? Mm-hmm. And you do get really attached to them because quite often you're making them for, making it as a gift for someone. Uh, it can be quite an emotional thing to do. Yeah, so I feel quite attached to that one, but um, I really must finish it and actually gift it before the baby's goes to school (laughs) (laughs) Uh, and which quilters are inspiring you right now if you have time at all to think about (laughs) who's inspiring you well I sort of have taken a step back from Instagram so I'm not on Instagram as much as I was before having a baby um, because at some point I do need to switch off from quilting yes but I still um, sort of dip in and out Um, I just don't post anymore because all I have is pictures of babies to share. (laughs) Um, And she is going to be absolutely mortified that I've mentioned this, but our production editor, Lorna... She is amazing. ...is Cloth and Crescent on Instagram. Yes. And she's such an inspiration. She's got such a distinctive style. I mean, I knew that she was a quilter when she joined us. It's one of the reasons why we hired her, in addition to being an excellent production editor. But in the last couple of years, she has just come into her own with her style. Where I know I have noticed um, that too. Actually, so I've seen impressed. her quilts and her posts and her styling and mm-hmm. the colours that she uses. And yeah, I'm blown away. I think she is a real gem of a quilter. Actually, agreed. Yeah, and her mirrored mountains pattern, which was her first release, I think, is on my to sew list. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, it's beautiful, really beautiful. Yeah, so she's on the list. Um, I'm also going to say, I think, Thomas Nower. Yes. Um, uh, we got advanced copies of his new book, uh, Why We Quilt, which is about sort of, you know, what mate- motivates the really influential figures in our industry, which is a, a really interesting read. But also he's a, an incredible writer and he has um, a really thoughtful and engaging style that yes. sort of really resonates with me. And he's a great guy, actually. And I... I luckily I met him a few years ago now uh-huh. mm-hmm. back at the um, so, um, Fat Quarterly Retreat yes. in London mm-hmm. and he um, he delivered a couple of workshops and he's genuinely such a lovely man and mm-hmm. he's so passionate but so knowledgeable as well and um, so I'm looking forward to seeing a copy of his book actually. Yeah I think you'll you'll really enjoy it and um, yeah he's he's somebody that makes me feel really proud to be part of our quilting community you know he's so eloquent and he is he talks about it so well um and I just wish that my writing was half as good as his it would make my Ed's letters a lot easier <laughs> <laughs> and do you have a favorite quilting technique you obviously like the uh, the slow stitching bit mm-hmm. of English paper piecing hand quilting yeah I think um English paper piecing is my go-to it was the first technique that as I say when I joined the magazine in 2014 um I hadn't done any quilting, really. I'd done sort of basic patchwork, but mm-hmm. um, I'd never made a quilt. And English paper piecing with simple one-inch hexagons was the first first thing I did. And um, I've kind of been hooked on it ever since. And it's great, isn't it? Because, you you know, we all have busy lives and you can just quickly pick it up and put it down again or take it with you, put it in a pouch, put it in your handbag, do it on the bus, do it on the train. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's uh, perfect to have a little tin in the living room that's kept on a high shelf out of reach of... <laughs> Small children. <laughs> so that's that's definitely my go-to. Yeah. And finally, we uh, like I like to end the podcast with a couple of um, tips for the listeners. Mm-hmm. And I just wondered if you would like to share a couple of tips relating to whether it's quilting or business or social media. What what uh, words of wisdom could you share with us? Well, I think my first thing is a sort of. Um, if you don't ask, you'll never know kind of approach is really good. If you're thinking about making quilting a business or maybe you're planning some sort of charity venture, I think don't underestimate the generosity of people in our community. If you are doing something special and you would like some help or you want uh, an event sponsored or something like that, reach out to the bigger brands and ask whether they'd like to be involved. I think that's quite a big one I think think people are afraid to ask Mm. and actually what's the worst that's going to happen the worst that's going to happen is you get told no but you you wouldn't you don't know until you try do Mm -hmm. you so I think uh, it's difficult to sort of put yourself out there and nobody wants to hear no but I definitely think you know reach out there and that goes for submitting to the magazine you know 
Unless you get in touch. You might get a big influx of uh, submissions. That suits me. (laughs) That would be lovely. Um, And then I suppose the other thing is if you're creating a kind of business around your quilting, then I think it's really important to build a brand for yourself. An identity Um, to make you... Yeah, so I think um, sort of find your style before you start building your following or reaching out to magazines and that sort of thing. Um, I th- think I mentioned before that a lot of the submissions I get, have there's something about them that I recognise their style. Sarah, I know your quilts when they come up on my feed. <laughs> a lot of people they, say that. Yeah, they, they've got your style. And I couldn't tell you what that style is, but it's some sort of combination of you know, your colour choices and your piecing and your photography that means when it comes off on my Instagram feed, I know that's one of yours. And that is what is behind all of the good designers that I want to feature in the magazine is something that's their style and their style only. And I think that's so important, isn't it, to be true to yourself and Mm. your style, not to try and emulate somebody else or be somebody else, but to be yourself and find your own style and and develop your own brand. Yeah. And I mean, it's a really difficult proposition. I mean, I'm a Look, I'm a total quilting magpie. I pick things up and put things down and I couldn't, I don't think I could define my style, but, um, you know, I think if, the other it's a thing, hobby for me. So I think the other thing to realise is it takes time. Yes. You're not going to build your brand overnight mm-hmm. and it is going to be, uh, you know, having creating over time a portfolio of work yeah. posting on instagram you know every day for years mm-hmm. it's not going to be you know six weeks six months and there's your brand it is that long game as it were mm-hmm. and just chipping away slowly and steadily you know building up your profile building up your style um and staying true to who you are and people slowly will start to recognize you i think yeah definitely i think that's it is put the time in to building that brand around yourself and what you're putting out there and it'll pay dividends in the future. So that's probably my best bit of advice. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you so much, Alice, for coming on the show. Oh, it's been pleasure. great to come up here and be in the recording studio with you. I know, you. it looks very professional. It really it? does. It's great. We'll have to get some photos and we'll, we'll put them on social media mm-hmm. so people can see. Um, and I look forward to reading the magazine uh, again next year and I'm looking forward to my free gifts. Good, and, thanks. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Alice. Brilliant. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you once again to my sponsors for this episode, Today's Quilter and Love Patchwork and Quilting magazine. Don't forget you can try these magazines out for yourself with this exclusive three issues for £5 offer. Visit www.buysubscriptions.com forward slash the GBQ podcast. (laughs) 